One steam engines for beginners, part 43. Two 12 inch Southworth steam pumps, the first one was very leaky and needed work. The second one, made by my friend Don English, is better, but there were still some leaks. The pump was very leaky when I first got it, and in fact it still leaks slightly, but this is only the gland on the water cylinder. And here it is, running in slow motion, and in this clip you can clearly see where the water's coming from. Originally, water issued forth from just about every possible orifice I can think of, but after making a new gasket and using some Loctite 542 on some of the bolts, all the leaks disappeared, except for this one, which is very easy to remedy. The first run that I gave this engine when it was very leaky was on compressed air, and now it's running on steam, you can also see that the gland on the piston rod is leaking as well. What's really impressive about this pump is the water flow. It's a double acting cylinder and the water flow from the pump is very very even. The pump of course is not pumping against the boiler pressure and the boiler pressure at the moment is only about 30 pounds per square inch anyway. The regulator or throttle for this pump is on the exhaust outlet and this is quite a common thing to do with pumps of this type and sometimes the pumps respond much better to an exhaust regulator than an inlet regulator. The knocking sound that you can hear is not the piston hitting the top and bottom of the water cylinder. These type of pumps have what's called a shuttle piston and that's what you can hear travelling end to end in its own little cylinder in the steam chest. The fix for the piston rod gland was pretty similar to the fix for the water pump gland. Just a case of tightening up the nut slightly. Not a good idea to do it while the engine's running because even though it's going very slowly you really do not want to get your finger in the way of that piston. It's a bit of a health and safety nightmare, but I do like to live life on the edge. Depending on the pressure that you feed to these pumps, obviously depends on the speed that they go at. When running in slow motion, model steam engines look quite like the full size. Unlike the coal-fired boiler plant that are featured in several videos, this boiler pump is not connected to the boiler itself, so it's unable to feed water into it. And the water's now running low, so I'm having to pump some clean water into the boiler using the hand pump. Sacrilege I know, but I'm only testing this pump, it's not a permanent installation. And once again, this is in slow motion, and as you can see, there's no water flooding out of the gland at the bottom, and no water dripping out of the steam gland at the top. This is a good tip for any beginners out there. Whenever you've finished running your steam engine, whether it be a pump or a rotary steam engine, always pump some oil through the engine cylinder, particularly if the engine is cast iron. Don't forget, you must get rid of all traces of water from a cast iron cylinder, otherwise when you put the engine away, rust will form inside the cylinder, and the next time you run the engine, you may find that the piston is stuck. This also happens quite frequently in model steam locomotives. And the ideal scenario is when nothing else but oil comes out of the exhaust pipe, it's time to put the engine away. I went to see my friend Don English the other day and I saw this engine languishing in a corner and so a price was agreed and I bought it. I don't intend to do a video series about this engine because I've really covered steam pumps I think in the last one. So I'm not going to mess about, I've lit the boiler to raise steam. I'm going to see whether it works without any intervention from me. While I'm waiting for the boiler to raise the steam that I need, I'm just giving it a run on some compressed air. And by the sound of it, there's a leak somewhere, I can hear that, and one of the water valves is stuck. But in no time at all, the water valve freed off. It was just obviously stuck on the seat. This one doesn't have a cap for the lubricator. It's the same kind of lubricator as on the horizontal version of this pump that Don made. So I think I'm going to make a cap for it and do a video about that at some stage. And while the boiler's still raising steam, it's a good idea to check your nuts. These were a bit slack, so I tightened them up with a socket. It's steam time. The superb Castle Steam Boiler raises steam in no time at all. So I've just opened the valve and I'm going to see what happens. The first thing that is apparent is that I think the gland on the piston may need adjusting, because quite a lot of oil and water is running out of there. And the pump is stuck at one end of the travel. Hmm just like the other pump did. Well it's not doing much, there's quite a lot of water dribbling out of the gland but that's about all. This is not a new engine, 
the horizontal version was much newer than this one and it's done quite a bit of running on compressed air but not on steam. I'm putting a piece of cloth on the bench just to soak up the condensate because there's a lot of it. Before I started running this engine I was curious to see what the valve arrangement was because the top fitting is different. So I took the cover off and I noticed that the shuttle piston is running in a sleeved cylinder and I think this is how it's shown on the drawing. But it's still not working. So I've pushed the piston to the bottom of the stroke and I'm going to turn on the steam valve again. And suddenly to my complete and utter surprise it works. As you can clearly see there's a lot of steam coming from the bottom gland on the steam cylinder, that's an easy fix. What I'm currently doing is closing the water valve a bit. This will simulate the engine pumping against pressure and you can clearly see the jet of steam now issuing forth from the gland. I like working with steam engines, they're just so incredibly steamy. And once again, for the umpteenth time, the only spanner that I can get to fit the gland nut is one of these cheap spanners from the spanner sets from Blackgate's Engineering. This engine differs from the other one. For instance, the exhaust flange, it's threaded, so I've just temporarily screwed in a 3 8 by 32 union. I'll make a proper flange for it, just like I did for the horizontal version. I think it's time to test the engine at a higher steam pressure. Note to self, it's not a good idea to turn up the steam pressure when the steam connection is just a piece of silicone rubber tubing pushed onto the threaded end of the tap. I've turned off the gas so you can hear the engine without the roar of the burner. and the pump stops as the pressure falls below 10 pounds per square inch. I went round the engine and tightened up all of the small bolts around the flanges. And I wondered what this silver soldered part on the cylinder cover was. I think it's probably a mistake. I'm going to have a look. The bolts all came out quite easily. None of them were sheared off. I would expect nothing less from Don English. Ah, see what the silver soldered part is now. It's covering the steam inlet. It's very easy in making a cylinder cover to just drill the holes all the way around the edge using a rotary table. I'm quite happy about this, it's not bothering me, but I think as an exercise that I can video to show beginners how to do it, I'm going to make a new cylinder cover. So today I think I'll take a trip to Blackgate's Engineering and buy a new cylinder cover, machine it and then copy the position of the holes, apart from the one that's in the wrong place, onto the new casting after I've machined it. There are one or two different ways to do this and I'll show both of them. One is the engineer's way and one is the musician's way. As I said earlier, there isn't going to be a series about this pump. I may fit some drain cocks to the pump because really when it first started off there was far too much water going everywhere. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.